Hey everybody, welcome to Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. My name is Reed with Best Made Videos. We are a wedding videography company based out of West Shadow, Washington. And I'm joined today by Ashley Lashney of Alston Mager Events. And uh, we have really gone through the ringer trying to get this going. And we've had some online issues uh, all on my end kind of the last couple of weeks. And so I want to, you know, so appreciate your willingness to come on and flexibility and scheduling and i always say the people that make the time to do stuff like this it really speaks to um you know just kind of their drive and professionalism so i really do appreciate it uh why don't you introduce yourself tell us who you are and what you do yay thank you so much for having me on the show i'm excited to be here so um as you stated my name is ashley i own elston Mager events which is a wedding planning company based in the pacific northwest about an hour north of portland and two hours south of seattle and i help couples have a zen wedding day by taking all of the details off of their plates and putting it on mine. So I'm very much about creating the same serenity that I had on my own wedding day because I hired a team of all-star vendors to take care of that kind of stuff for me. Well, perfect. And I guess that's as good of a place of any to start. I always love to hear about people's wedding days and that experience. So tell us about your day. What was that like? Oh, gosh, I could go on forever. Um, I got married in September to my awesome husband, Garrett, um, two years ago, this last September. Um, we got married at the Allison Inn and Spa in Newburgh, Oregon, which is a beautiful, beautiful facility um, in and spa in Newburgh, Oregon wine country, um, very zen, very quiet, very serene, and it was just the best. All I had to do was show up and get married. So I figured that um, when it came time to start my business and um, really figuring out the why behind doing what I do, it was a way to give back to other couples what I got to experience on my wedding day. Yeah, it's so hard. And, you know, we've had lots of different, you know, planners from Seattle and Portland and whatnot on here. And I always say, you know, being a wedding planner, you know, it's the most thankless job and it's the hardest to to see because there's it, it, the only tangibleness, like you said, is kind of that Zen or, you know, the feeling of ease that the bride and groom have. And and it's just it's hard to to really like convey that because, you know, obviously if someone like you isn't there, then everybody else has to pick up so much of the work. And, you know, in our price point, we really are like 50 50 in terms of like our couples having, you know, they have coordinators or planners and, and then not. And, you know, believe me, and all the photographers I work with would say that, you know, you can always tell uh, when there's not and when there's a lot of other slack that we have to pick up. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Yes. And I love obviously I really resonate with couples that um, find value in a, a wedding planner or a coordinator. But um, people who are not about making their relatives or their guests work on their wedding day for them is really big for for me so whenever someone says oh i'm i'm so glad you're here and you can take care of this this and this but then i'll have my aunt just kind of stand here and, and she can work on that we try to find a way around that because we're not about taking your guests away from the experience of your wedding day or yourself for that matter so no, my, my famous story, I don't even know if I've ever shared it on the podcast. We had, um, this was like five or six years ago now, we had a bride, kind of a, a DIY kind of affair, and all their favors, they had like 75 people at the guest, and all, they had made individual Lego favors for all the all the guests, and they had gone and had a hat and a head, and a, you know, it was like very thorough um, things and these signs and everything. And they showed up to the venue and it was all in this box and it was all just chaos. And, you know, they basically the bride, I think the ceremony was at five and it was about 440. She's not even in her dress yet, sitting there trying to like, you know, reassemble these Legos. And I was pretty new. Like I said, this was like five, six years ago. And I'm like, this is not like, this can't be normal. Right. And if, you know, if you had had somebody there like yourself, like 
she needs to go do other things like actually get married, you know what I mean? And not be dealing with this little nitpicky stuff, you know? Yes. Yeah. That kind of stuff just makes all of us, I think in the event industry, just die a little (laughs) inside (laughs) because we have seen successful weddings and we've seen not successful weddings. And so it's usually everybody's first time getting married. And so there's a lot of education that has to happen with couples and um, like potty training as Angela Prophet um, calls it (laughs) potty training clients about um, just how much you will be able to take on during a, a wedding day or a wedding week or a wedding weekend. And thus just how much has to be outsourced or needs to be outsourced to preserve your own sanity. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's only so many hours in the day and especially leading up, you know, there's just only so much that a person can do without, like you said, having to rely on family members or family, you know, or family or friends or, you know, aunt or uncle or whoever, someone, someone's going to have to do that work. And so it's whether you want it to be, you know, your, your mom or you want them to, you know, enjoy the the wedding, you know what I mean? Right. So it was, yeah, even when we got married, so we were similar to you three years ago in August. And like, that was, a, it was a big sell to get my wife to kind of sign up for the, having the, you know, having a planner. And she, you know, I'm sitting there like in the industry trying to explain this and we almost didn't. And it was really a, it was a hard sell to get her to do it. But obviously she was just tremendously glad that we did because it meant mm-hmm. that, you know, her mom and dad could do just enjoy and kind of host everybody and not have to feel like they're, you know, picking up trash or cleaning tables or whatever you got to do, getting the gifts all put away at the end of the night, you know? Yes. Yeah. And every wedding expo or wedding show that I've done to try and showcase my business has resulted in several people, you know, almost everybody who is married already that is accompanying, you know, the, uh, the engage to this event is saying, I wish I would have had a coordinator. I wish I would have invested in that. And then tells me this, heartbreaking story about how their mom like wasn't present at all because she was having to deal with issues at the reception venue or she was having to set tables or our caterer didn't show up. And so she had to field questions and go back and forth and this, that, and the other thing. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's such a huge investment. And I almost feel bad saying, you know, people need it because I do believe there are weddings that can exist without a coordinator, it's really a know your crowd situation, but I just, I hate to see people working on their wedding day. Cause that's not what it should be about by any means. Absolutely. So were you, were you down in Kelso? I was kind of curious about this too, just kind of in the, the pre-planning. So what kind of area do you service the most? Are you, do you head down South more? Do you have enough in Southern, Southern Washington? Where, where's kind of your demo that you work in? That is a great question. I have been all over um, and all over, I should say, like it within the Pacific Northwest. So I've been as far north as Seattle. I've been as far south as um, Lincoln City and did a wedding at Salishan earlier this year, which was lovely. Um, Have done weddings in Portland. We'll be doing a wedding in Ariel, Washington next August 2020. So kind of just I changed my, my profile location with uh, Instagram because I was like, Kelso doesn't really say anything. Like I'm in the Pacific Northwest. I could travel if I needed to. So yes, I'm all over within the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> yeah. But I do think you're, it is like a unique, you know, location. Cause I, I mm-hmm. mean, I've spent most of my life in Washington too, but I do think where it is kind of in the middle there where you can service, you know, a couple of different major metropolitans as opposed to being like super far south. I just, I, you know, I was just curious about that because we don't get a lot, yeah. you know, like you said, the vendors that are like from Kelso, but I definitely know mm-hmm. where that is. Yes. Yeah. And I used to work previously before um, doing events and, and coordination and all of that good stuff. I was in talent acquisition for a pulp and paper company that was in town. And that was one of our big selling points. Talent acquisition is a lot about marketing and trying to get candidates to, you know, come and work for your company and that sort of thing. And so we would always say we're right in the middle of everything here. You know, we're a couple hours from the coast, you're a couple hours from Seattle, you're just an hour from Portland. So it is a great location to be centrally located, a little lower price point in housing, um, but still get exposure to all of those markets. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, and we talked a little bit about this kind of before we started recording, but you know, the name uh, Alison Mager, you know, I was trying to figure out, well, okay, well, it's not a play on your name, you know, trying to figure out kind of where, you know, where names come from and business names. So talk about that and, and kind of the inspiration, you know, when you started that and, and it was just a great story, uh, story you shared. Yes. So being a couple hours from the coast, there was an annual trip that my family makes every year to head out there. And thus my husband got on that train when we were dating and then engaged and now married. And um, when we pass by Rainier, there is a road sign that says Austin Mega Road. And I just was always bothering him about it and said, I really feel like you should make a band, Garrett, and call it Alston Maker. Like, wouldn't that be cool? And he just kind of always laughed it off. But when it came time to find a name for this business, he suggested that I use that because it had obviously really resonated with me and felt like it sounded really cool. There's a band called Mayor Hawthorne, and I felt like it kind of sounded like that. So um, that was how the, the name came to be. It's definitely not cool or romantic or anything like that, but that was... That was my choice. That's great. It's great. So how did you kind of get in, in, involved in this? Um, you know, a lot of people that, you know, get in the weddings had done similar events or other kind of corporate stuff. How did you kind of find yourself in this world and, and you know, kind of go back as far as you need for the, for the origin story here? Yeah. So in 2016, when I got engaged, I started um, really taking an interest, obviously, in wedding planning because I was planning my own wedding. Prior to that, when I worked in talent acquisition with the Pulp and Paper Company, part of my job description was assisting and facilitating some of those larger events for the company. So some of them were offsite, some of them were onsite, but still, you know, wherever they are, we all know that events are, you know, it takes coordination, takes managing third-party vendors, takes timelines, et cetera. So got into it there, got into the wedding side of things when I got engaged then interned with a company um, out of Portland called Bridal Bliss, who I respect immensely and taught me so much. Um, I figured if I really want to find out whether or not I love this, I should do it as an intern and work the long hours and just really go for it. So I did that and did about 10 weddings with them over one summer and then ended up getting married myself. And then um, Garrett was just my biggest cheerleader about all of that and said this, it's not something that is really common around here. I feel like there's obviously a need for it. I mean, you live in Kelso and you had a coordinator, so there might be other people in Kelso that are getting married that could benefit from this. So I think you should go for it. It's funny because I've, uh, in my time, I've talked with a lot of different couples getting married and, uh, you know, numerous times before I've heard the like, oh, well, we're, you know, I want to get into weddings after, after we get married or like, oh, we're, we're thinking about opening the venue. And, you know, I do always kind of laugh because like I said, you kind of got to get through it yourself, but you really did put your right. money where your mouth was. And you, <laughs> yes. But I mean, you did it. Like you're the one that, that did it when everybody, because I've heard that a lot. Like, oh, we're going to get married and then we're just going to open the venue and we're going to be set, you know, mm -hmm. but you, you actually did. So, I mean, you went like head on into weddings with, interning and planning and, and getting married and what, I yeah. mean, was it just like a whole new world for you? Did you like go to a lot of weddings of uh, friends? Like, was this totally like a new unique take? I was a little bit, I'm, I'll be 32 this year. And when we got married, I was 29. So by that time, uh, most of my friends that were getting married had already gone through that. Um, so not a whole heck of a lot of attendance happening there. There were a few that have happened since we've been married, which have been super, super fun to to go to and to be a part of and everything. But um, yeah, just a, I just kind of figured, you know, it's a it's a passion. It's something that really speaks to me. And I really love creating a, an environment where people say, oh, my gosh, I didn't have to think about anything. You were just right there. You just handled it. So I figured well, maybe, maybe that could be something that could happen around here. And then, like I said, my husband was just my biggest cheerleader and was like, I really think you should go for it. And so here we are. What was it like kind of, you know, starting that whole thing? I mean, did you have, you know, entrepreneurship in your family or, or was this something that was just, 
you know, what was kind of the reaction? I mean, obviously you said your husband was supportive, but I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's one thing to do it or the intern or the dabble, but then to be like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, build this and start this. What was that like? Yeah. So, um, Garrett actually has a company called West of Olympia, which is an artisan, sh- uh, soap, like shape soap company. So he was just really instrumental in knowing how to get um, a Washington business license like applied for and lined up and what you need to bring with you to the bank when you're going to open up a business checking account and what kind of insurance you need to apply for if you're doing this kind of business versus that kind of business. So he had kind of courageously like... I don't know, gone through the forest with the machete before me. (laughs) And then when he suggested that I, um, you know, take this on and and really got behind it and everything, he was like, and I can help on the business side of things because I have already been there and been through it. So it was wonderful to have him there for that. He is also a finance person by education and by trade. That's what he does in his day job. So he is a good person to have crunchy numbers and I can do a creative thing. So one of my favorite phrases is that I do not tend to math very often. So I always preface any <laughs> equation that I have been asked to do with you not know, math often. So apologies if this is incorrect, but yeah. Well, no, you, you need to go where your strengths are. And we talk a lot about that on the podcast where we most of the people in this field are creative, you know, entirely or for the most part, or, you know, trying to balance. And so it's, it's this weird industry we're in of trying to like actually run a business, but then also, you know, be creative and and do, you know, the art of, you know, building a wedding or, or, you know, taking photos or flowers or, you know, whatever part of it, but it is a weird dichotomy of trying to kind of get a bunch of stuff together, you know? Yes. Yeah. And it can be really overwhelming as somebody who has never kind of forayed into that before. And one of the first things that I did after I got everything set up was go to the together experience, which was a conference in Portland. Um, and it was put on by Devin McCabe and she had a bunch of amazing, like motivational speakers, also like foundational speakers. Joey Vital was there with Indie Law, Monty Washington was there, Um, Tiffany with Emma Rose Agency, who's like a fantastic branding person, Chaya Rose. I mean, I could go on and on, but um, just like building that community and really leaning into people who are in the same boat as you are, as far as kind of just starting out as an entrepreneur, um, it kind of fostered the whole community over competition thing, which is something that I really strive to stand by. And I have a group here that meets locally in Cowlitz County um, that is event professional based. And we can talk about our goals and we can tour sites together, do site walks together. Um, We support other local businesses that are opening up as a group. So that I think is really important. The business side is one thing, but it's really easy to feel like you're in a boat all alone, the only person who's ever gone through this, the only person who's ever felt these feelings. Um, but there, it's just so important to know that there's other people out there that are like climbing the same mountain as you. Yeah, it's so, it is so hard to like start a business like that. And we kind of went through this last year where I'm trying to get Dorothy to do, um, we're trying to do another kind of small business thing. And like, like your husband, like I kind of gone through it, you know, within the last, you know, six years. And so I kind of had some semblance of like, okay, trying to remember like, okay, well, how, you know, what order did I do stuff? And like, it is so difficult to like do it and to do it. Like, I just, I think the state and the cities, I don't, I just think they make it like not, it's not easy at all to be like, here's something that I'm passionate about and here's what I want to do. And like, just making sure you have everything in order. And it, it is, uh, I could see how like having a community like that would be so helpful. Cause you do just feel like you're trying to Google stuff online and you're like, I don't even know like what, you know, there, what's like service industry, mm-hmm. and, like what tax code you're like, well, I don't even know like what, you know, like what mm-hmm. kind of, it's just, it's hard to know. And you just, you know, you're worried about doing it wrong and you just want to, you know, you just want to like plan weddings and help people, you know, you don't right. want to <laughs> worry about all that crap, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. So but what, that foundation is so important. I feel like to get that business side taken care of just so that you aren't liable for, I mean, heaven forbid that anything should happen, but I think it's so important to like establish an LLC and get the, get your contracts in order make sure that your clients are signing those, um, look for templates and alter it. If you feel like you can meet with a lawyer, like there's a lot of people out there that would just share with you if you're newer into the industry and you don't have one yet. Um, but yeah, just so important to get that, that stuff up, like the kind of the walls up, so to speak, or the foundation up so that you can have the creative license to, to explore a little more. What, was there things that you thought would be easier when you were starting that ended up being harder or things that you thought would be harder that you ended up figuring out quicker? I mean, what was it like kind of going through that? Because a lot of, you know, we got a lot of couples on here, but then also a lot of, you know, other vendors and, and entrepreneurs listen as well. Mm -hmm. Gosh. I think something that ended up being easier than I thought it would be was to talk to people about my business, which is funny because at the beginning, like before we went on, I was like, I think it's going to be weird to talk about my business, but, um, to be, yeah, to be honest, it's like, it's easy to connect with people who shared, um, or are sharing that same excitement and fire and light that you felt when you were engaged. And, um, it's, it's very relatable. So you can obviously get behind, you know, their mission, which is like to get married and how, you know, show how you can bring value to the day by doing that. And I guess I, you think that selling yourself is going to be kind of this really scary, like very opaque area that you can't really see through. And it ends up being not about selling. It's about you know, just kind of connecting with people and letting them know that you're there for them, essentially. Well, and I do think having gone through the experience yourself, um, you know, I, we got married, uh, I had started the business and then we, you know, we got married while, like while I was doing weddings. But I think like having gone through that, like you do, like you said, you have that instant connection and kind of know, you know, you know, those feelings. And like, I, I think looking back, like I think I was a subpar vendor having not gone through all that and not understanding like all the decisions that have to be made and, and the time commitments and the time crunch and, you know, that you might have 45 minutes a day where you got to make decisions. And I see a lot of vendors that like don't uh, empathize the way that I think people that have gone through it. And like, you know, exactly like the stress points that they're hitting and, mm -hmm. you know, how you handled it and how you can now help them and kind of give them advice. And I think it's gotta be, um, really helpful. Like you said, I've just gone, kind of gone through this to really connect with the clients that you have. I did just have a bride tell me, so obviously like everybody who's involved in weddings has wedding nightmares. Like your vendors have them. I'm sure that you're having them if you're engaged and you're listening to this. Um, and I had them. And one of my favorite wedding nightmares that I had was that um, my mom rented mannequins from our florist. It's just not even something that she like provides. I'm sure she could get them if you ask them for her. Um, rented mannequins from Bloom PDX and staged them around the Allison to scare our wedding guests specifically. And then like the plot twist to that wedding nightmare was that Robin Williams, who is obviously deceased, like rest in peace, showed up at her hotel room door to um, say that he was a big fan of her work and that she should keep it up. So I was just, you know, I love sharing that kind of stuff with my brides because obviously a couple weeks out, things are getting very tense for them and they're probably having wedding nightmare overload. Um, so I, I always tell the story about how Robin Williams congratulated my mom for playing jokes on our guests because <laughs> that <laughs> is something that would not necessarily ever happen in real life if he were alive or not. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's hard because it is, it's like this once in a lifetime thing. And, you know, we've had, you know, couples this summer that have had, you know, we had a photographer get injured like the night before a wedding and we're for, you know, and like just everything can go wrong. You're like, God, I just want everyone to be happy. You know, I really just want everyone to kind of get through this unscathed, you know? Oh, dang it. So uh, what's the like craziest thing that's happened during 
a wedding that you've shot? Um, that, that was really interesting. Cause that, like I said, that was the night before and she, the photographer had, we had been booked for, you know, better part of nine months. And, um, that was a, a lot of scrambling. We did have, um, some dating drama get in the way of, um, the best man had kind of co- gotten, come on to one of the bridesmaids the night before. And so they got up in the morning and I think like she had left and he was upset and, they uh they were missing like large portions of their bridal party and so that ended up being so then we show up and chris who's still my friend today he's been on the podcast before uh we both show up and we had never worked together and we said um you know we meet in the lobby and the maid of honor whoever comes down to get us and you know you say oh hey like how's everything going and you always expect them to be like oh it's good and she's like uh it's really terrible right now like there's a lot of stress going on and we're like oh Oh. okay like we're not we're not ready for this so uh yeah that was we definitely uh and then the um like the officiant this was all the same wedding they did a cord ceremony and the officiant forgot the cord oh, and then he forgot that they did their own vows so like he pronounced them and then they kissed and then they had to like backtrack and do their own vows and so it was a, it was a <laughs> lot of a day yeah it was a lot of a day our um unity candle blew out like right <laughs> i mean like the one the symbol of you know marriage or whatever Garrett and I went to light it but it was in a glass hurricane sleeve and so when we tipped the um little like the smaller pillar candles over to light it they hadn't been lit for very long because their moms had just come up and done that and so they just went out like we tried to light it and it lit for a second and then it just died and so they had to come back and it was yeah it was a moment what can you do no what those can you do? candles are always they're always <laughs> I, I, unless you got a blowtorch, I think it's going to be hard. I know, right? Did you have any fun stories this summer? Um, not this summer, no, but I was thinking of, it wasn't a wedding that I worked um, when I was interning, but while I was interning and we were doing a wedding at a facility, there was another wedding happening on a different floor of the same facility. And uh, with the current political climate, there was a protest happening outside and the Uh, cake delivery was coming through the front doors instead of utilizing the service entrance, which I believe was due to the fact that there was two weddings loading in and they were just like, this will be faster. We'll come in the front. Um, But someone from the protest came up and just took the cake and threw it out into the street. So it wasn't the wedding that I was working on, but it was, we heard about it peripherally because, you know, the service people in the hotel were talking about it and we just couldn't imagine, I mean, do that to, I don't know, a, a pizza maybe, but not a wedding cake. No, it's rough. It's rough. And I, you know, I kind of like, I always think like, you know, everything's going to be okay. And I try to tell the couples that, but I know if that was my wedding, you know, that we, we, this summer we got married, we had an outdoor wedding and it, it rained, it rained, it rained, it rained. And I kept telling them all day, Oh, it's going to be fine. And ultimately it, it, it ended up being fine. And, and we, it, you know, cleared at four forty five or whatever. And it was fine. But, um, I said, man, if it rains on my wedding day, I'm going to be pissed. Like, know, you know, it's easy, it's easy to say that, but <laughs> When it's your own, it's it's easier said than done. Yes. Yeah. So what kind of couples do you find uh, you enjoy working with? Like you said, you know, connecting and sharing those stories. But what, you know, what what is, you know, your kind of ideal couple that you like to work with and that you find, you know, appreciates you and, and your personality? Because I think, you know, planning and coordination, it's so personality tied, you know, to mm-hmm. who you are and, you know, how you work. Yes. So obviously it's somebody that really prioritizes their feelings and their emotional state. So like, I know exactly how I want to feel on my wedding day. Um, and I know that I can achieve that by having you as my planner or coordinator. Um, uh, people that really like have deep roots with their family. And we all have conflict with the, you know, like some family members or whatever, but that they're, um, they're really about like feeling palpable, love and joy surround them in the room um, and just feeling really supported by their friends and their family. And I think there's a definite 
you know, like crowd and vibe that that kind of scenario goes along with. So indoor, outdoor, doesn't really matter. We've done all that. The beach, a city, we've done all that. Barns, hotels, we've done all that. Um, but just going back to the the basics, I guess, if you will, about having a a true support system in place. People like your crowd is just so stoked to see you get married. They are so excited to be invited. They are honored to be there. And you have created, you know, this celebration with me as a thank you to them for supporting your relationship thus far. How do you, cause I do think that that's a, a kind of a, a great way that you just explain that. Um, because I, I think I give, I don't do a great job, I guess, of, of doing that. I understand. I, I think that is what I would like to be around too, but I probably don't do the best way of like explaining that. How do you <laughs> not vet, but how do you, like you said, these people that really know and are in touch and, and can explain that. I mean, how do you tell that or how do you, um, is it just the people that are attracted to your work or I don't know, how do you kind of like make sure that it, it's that good vibe? That's a good question. So I follow, I try to follow, you know, a lot of different advice about the way that you should show up on social media, you know, for your business and everything. And I think that just being authentic and true to who you are, um, just kind of lends itself like your vibe attracts your tribe, so to speak. So the kind of person that you are will bring around and surround yourself with the kind of people that feel that and kind of like vibrate on that level, if you will. So I try to be conscious about what I include in um, my social media verbiage and what's on my website. And um, I, I guess I just hope that it speaks to that type of, of person And even if it doesn't, you know, we've had, we've all had consults that don't end up in bookings and that's okay too. Um, I always tell people whether they're meeting with myself or if they're heading off to meet with a venue or even the place where you're going to buy your dress or rent your tux from, like if your gut is telling you that something's off, that's not your tribe. That's not your vendor. Just move on because the, there's many, many wedding vendors out there and one will speak to and resonate kind of that vibe that you have going on. Yeah, no. And, and the more I kind of do it too, I, I definitely get that. And I know that, um, you know, money and there's budgets and stuff, but yeah, you really do ultimately hope that people find, you know, vendors that they connect with and that they feel comfortable with. Cause I do think, with all the other stuff, uh, you know, when it comes like just down to money or, or budgets or whatever, like you do lose a lot of that. Well, you're going to be with these people for a long time. And like, I bug my couples forever with like happy anniversary. Like you, yeah. you, you're, you're a part of your life. Right. And so you do, I mean, I know ultimately like money, you know, it doesn't grow on trees or whatever, you know, like it, it is a thing, but you do hope that you find people that you're going to want to be with for a while. And that mm-hmm. you feel really comfortable with on your wedding day, like the tribe thing. I like that you're talking. That's a, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I just referred to my, um, my bridesmaids and then I also had a man of honor. So they were just my bride tribe. Cause that was how I <laughs> rolled with that. But, um, yeah, it's just that your vibe attracts your tribe. That's where, that's where it's at. That's what I wholeheartedly believe in. I believe, I totally believe in like we rise by lifting others type scenario. And if, even if I'm not the person that you end up booking, I hope that you learned something during our chat that helped you discern, you know, what to look for in the next person. What are some of those things that you try? Because I always ask, you know, vendors of any kind, um, what do you wish more people knew or asked? Or what do you try to educate people about, you know, you or what you do or, or, you know, kind of coordination in general? I mean, what do you wish that more people knew or asked about? Yeah, so I wish that um, couples would ask about kind of like what's included in a timeline. Because I think a timeline is kind of an enigma that people hear about and they know that there has to be one, but what does it really mean? And 
who's going to enforce it. And, you know, it's just a piece of paper unless somebody's there, like actually taking stuff off of it. So I try to really educate couples in consultations about what I do and how much of my time that I put into their weddings and how much I invest into their weddings so that they can relax and have a good day. Um, and just try to explain that value, I guess, with people. Yeah. It's like we were talking earlier, just, it's, you know, weddings, it's so, it just being the planner is so hard because, you know, weddings like happen all the time. Same with video, but, you know, weddings happen, you know, without certain vendor types and like any wedding that, I guess happens is a success, but it could be so much more smoothly run and so much more emotionally just not draining or stable or however right. you want to say it. But you know, you, yeah. you we, there, there's ways to, you know, you can get to the finish line a bunch of different ways, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You so find I'm, that, Oh, go for it. Yep. Sorry. My husband and I are, are rewatching the haunting of Hill house on Netflix. Is that something you've watched? No, I said that no. It's okay. So it's kind of scary, but then at the end, it's like, oh, it wasn't really scary at all. Anyways, it's wonderful. Mike Flanagan is an amazing director. You should totally watch it. Um, but there's one episode where um, two of the characters get married and they're at their wedding reception and they're trying. The groom comes up and he's like, ah, so and so's outside. I'm, I'm trying to track down you know, these people or whatever. And she's like, well, we're going to do toasts. And he's like, I know I'm trying to track them down. I'll be right back. And he gives her a kiss and he leaves and I was laying on the couch and I was like, should have hired a coordinator. Like, <laughs> just shouting at the television. My husband well, thinks I'm funny sometimes. No, I think it's great. <laughs> no. And because there's been so many this year that we've had like that, where people are, are doing stuff that like we had this wedding and, you know, bless them all. And the, and the bride's getting ready and the bridesmaids like, hey, so when we get to like, we got to go to the church and like, do you think I should bring my car? Like, should I drive? And then like, can we Uber back? Or like, I'm like, dude, she's getting her dress on in like four minutes. Like, why are you asking? Like, it's the same thing. Like, hire a court. Like, why are you bothering her with these like legit, like your personal logistical right. stuff right now? Like, she's literally getting your dress on in five minutes. And we're talking about like Uber. Like, how can we get the car to the thing. Like that is something that you need to have a coordinator and be like, no, I got that. Like, mm -hmm. well, you go mm -hmm. do your stuff. Just worry about getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take care of that. Don't worry. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. I try to make sure too, that brings up a great point that the, um, bride kind of and groom both identify kind of one or two people in their bridal party that they want to have a copy of the timeline so that they can have reference to that kind of information because otherwise you do sometimes have those people that are like, well, I wouldn't have asked, but I didn't know. So like there's never too much communication. Um, don't get it to them too early, <laughs> but maybe like the night before, just say, Hey, here's a copy of this. If you need to reference it, if needed, here is my cell phone number. Please program it into your phone. Text me with any questions. I'll be checking in with you throughout the day and just kind of see you know, how the mood is and how everything is progressing and that sort of thing. I think that's good. I think that's actually a really good idea. And then you kind of have a liaison too. I just, like I said, there's just been too much like bugging brides and grooms mm -hmm. this year, like yeah. if, that's, that I am comfortable with. And I just kind of stand there. I'm just like, and even like, you know, like from photographers and like florists, like, well, what do you think? And I'm like, don't, don't be asking them that today. You know, right. like we had, we had a groom and they were, they hired a guy to do, to like do a sound. Um, yeah. Like was he wasn't a real DJ, like that whole thing. Like he was bringing in like the speakers and stuff, but he wasn't. And so we're like in the, we're in the middle of family photos and, and the groom's phone rings. He goes, Oh, I got to go do a sound check with the DJ. And I'm like, absolutely not like absolutely not like <laughs> i will go do that and i will leave my you know my assistant to sh like we will you do not need to leave the middle mm -hmm. of family photos to go do a sound check with a guy that's it's like we have an hour and a half till the ceremony like what's going on here it's just yeah. crazy too much bugging them let them yeah. have their day i love too that industry professionals feel very protective of their clients like i've read stories about um, a photographer who was in the bridal suite and the mother-in-law came in wearing a white dress and everyone was like, Oh, I can't believe she did that. And the photographer was like, kind of 
said it was written from the photographer's perspective. So we were like, I looked over at the bride. She kind of like gave me the okay. And so I just dumped a glass of wine on her dress and she had to go buy a new one. <laughs> and I was like, that is, that is like real MVP status right there, man. Like event industry professionals are fiercely protective of their clients. And I like that we're kind of all in that same camp that way. Maybe not quite to that extreme. That's, I don't know if I could ever crazy. do that, but um, yeah, that she really, she or he really took one for the team there. <laughs> that's yeah. Cause that could have gone, I mean, you know, if you got the AOK from the Brian, then that's, you know, I guess <laughs> yeah. you're good to go. So we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, why don't you talk through uh, just before we get you out of here, you know, some of the services and things that, that you do and, and what, you know, things that you specialize in and that you feel like, where your strengths are, I guess, as a planner and what you want people to know kind of in the, that way, like the actual business stuff you're going to talk about besides sure. who we are. <laughs> sure. So I offer a couple different, um, like tiers of service, if you will. So, uh, wedding day management or what is more commonly known as day of coordination, which I try to stay away from that term because it truly, I, while I am there, the day of what I do for you happens like months in advance. So um, you and I would meet, we would kind of go over what you've already got nailed out. If you need any recommendations on vendors or anything like that, I'm here for you. Um, but you do the majority of the uh, booking, you're negotiating your own contracts, um, you're booking your own vendors, you're paying your own uh, deposits. And um, then a couple months out from the wedding, I kind of take full control over your vendors. So you're gonna send me all the contracts, um, we will kind of sit down and do a detail meeting of like, what person, what time does this person think that they need to be there? Um, all of that kind of stuff. And then I start kind of constructing that really meticulously detailed timeline for the day of then day of once that is all complete about 14 days before that, um, I send it all to your vendors. I aim to have it done about 30 days out from your wedding so that I can have a phone call with all of your vendors and make sure that the timeline is agreeable with what they feel like they signed up for and all that good stuff. Um, then about 14 days out after you've approved a final, final timeline, we send that to all of your vendors. And then day of, I show up when the first vendor arrives and kind of manage all of their questions. And as they start to kind of trickle in throughout the day, I'm their point of contact. They come to me with questions. Um, I would be, uh, you know, fiercely protective of the clients and not bothering the bride and groom with any questions. Um, and then we get you married. We get you to the reception. We get your photos taken somewhere in there, wherever you prefer that they be taken. And then I'm there until the last vendor packs up and heads out for the night. And then with full service planning, you would come to me and say, I don't want any of this to take up any space in my brain whatsoever. I help you find the vendors usually present like three options for each category um, with tiered pricing, if that is an issue for you um, or something that you want to be conscious of. And um, we walk through that whole process together. We talk about what your, what your guests should be you know, smelling what the linen should feel like to them, um, what the what the space, you know, what vibe the space should give off, and and how floral and uh, your menu and the type of music that you play can feed into all of that and really create like a vision and and bring that to life. So, yeah, that's good. I love it. I was just thinking. I've had this summer has been the summer for just like weird planner stuff. I've had phone calls asking me for my timelines. I've had timelines where I was not even included and oh, they did wow. not even, they didn't even know that I was a vendor. So it has been, it has been a, it's been an odd summer. So I do think, uh, not all coordination is equal, but I do think it sounds like you have a pretty good, uh, plan here. And, and especially the day of timing and, and, and kind of giving that, that full day stuff, I, I do think is, is, underrated how important that is because I've, I've seen it done a lot of different ways and split coverage or coming in the, the, I just not I think it, it seems like you got a good plan going so that yeah. I would stick with that <laughs> I just can't 
I can't get behind the whole leaving after dinner thing. There's so much that happens, you know, after dinner service goes out that, you know, or just cutting it off at like 9 p.m. or like, oh, you only have nine hours of my time and then I'm going to go home. Um, I don't know if I would even be able to sleep if I got home and I knew that (laughs) something was still going on. Like, it's almost like you're a captain of the ship. Like all of those guests are your responsibility. If there are any injuries, if there are, um, like heaven forbid someone have some kind of allergic reaction to something and medical needs to be involved. Like you have that emergency kit. I'm sure as event industry professionals, we've all got, you know, some semblance of that going on, but like full messenger bag with all of the, you know, the scissors, the sewing kits, the deodorant, the toothpaste, the Pepto-Bismol, you know, it all comes with me. And, you know, I can't imagine not seeing an event through to a full completion where all guests have vacated the space. Cause that's, you know, if you're going to say you're responsible for it, you really have to kind of take the reins and be responsible for it until the very end. No, absolutely. No, I, I echo that a hundred percent. I think that that is the right way to look at it. Uh, I think you have done fantastic here tonight as someone that, you know, people like we get nervous about talking and sharing and yeah. filling time. And I think you've done fantastic, uh, Thank you. really sharing, you know, who you are. And I do think letting, um, just kind of your personality and how you look at events, I, I do think is is really valuable. Um, is there anything else that you would want to touch on that I haven't asked you about or any other um, fun stories or anything be- before we get to our uh, closing plugs here? Gosh, I think I'm good. I just want to encourage everybody to really trust your gut when you meet with your vendors and um, ask questions, even if you think that they're dumb questions, even if you are worried about how, if you're going to be judged or not, if you ask those questions, just ask them. Cause I can assure you that anybody that's going to be working on your wedding wants it to go the absolute best that it can go. So don't be afraid to converse and to connect with your, with your wedding pros and don't forget to watch the haunting of Hill house. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely no questions are good if you book people if i have people and they don't have any questions and then you're like well are, are, do, do they really want a video do they really care right. you know like I, questions are good there no, there's no dumb questions i think it's good to to ask people it, it even if it's pretend it makes people feel like you're interested so it's good <laughs> <laughs> at least for my sake i want them to think that it's important for them for sure so, uh, this has been so great. Uh, like I said, you know, your flexibility and coming on and, and, you know, it's late at night. I always appreciate it. Uh, if people want to learn more about you and your planning and, and see all your different stuff, where would be the places you would want them to check out? Oh, sure. You can go to alstonmagerevents.com or you can find me on Instagram and it's just at alstonmagerevents. So A-L-S-T-O-N-M-A-Y-G-E-R. And then events with an S. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you again so much. This has been a delight and getting to connect with people outside of Seattle is always exciting for me. So I do really appreciate yes. you coming on and taking the time. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Uh, if you are interested in coming on the podcast as a vendor, you can go to www.bestmadevideos.com slash podcast guest and that's a great easy um questionnaire that you can fill out and get you in the system and we can hopefully get something scheduled here you know fall heading into winter kind of slower season so uh thanks again and check back next week for another wedding vendor interview thanks so much